Hi, my name's Nate, and welcome to Outside the Vacuum, where I'm working to revive an historic, antiquated, and completely obsolete electric piano from the 1920s, a Quinola Model CX. And today, we're going to see the X. The telephone unit consists of three main parts. At the base here we've got the valve chest, then we've got 24 beater pneumatics that play 24 rosewood xylophone bars on the xylophone proper. Now just like every other pneumatic component in this electric piano, well, the motor's electric, the rest of it's pneumatic, this thing needed a complete overhaul to bring it back to life. So we've got our pouch board. This is the bottom half of our valve chest. This is the top half with the actual valves. There's a gasket here. And this is our pallet board. And these pallet valves seal against these fittings here. So at the core of this valve chest, we have our valves. And they seat against this lower ring. And in the off position, this valve is sucked tight against these rings and no air can pass through here. When it's time for the note to play, this valve lifts up slightly and it seals against this valve seat and when it's up off of this ring it allows air to pass through this hole here this hole connects to our pneumatic so when it's up air can flow through this hole around here down through this hole and out of the valve chest these are our pouches that lift the valves up and down when the valve is off this pouch is neutral isn't that nice? But when the valve turns on, atmosphere rushes through underneath this pouch and lifts this up. And that's because there's suction or vacuum in this chest. And it's these pallet valves that turn those pouches off and on. These are actually spring-loaded and seal against here. These holes are what allow atmosphere underneath the pouches. That's how it works in a nutshell. We'll take another look at it after it's restored. So these top valve seats consist of two parts. You've got the fiber disc and the inner brass ring, which is threaded. And those threads allow you to adjust the valve travel. But a lot of them have seized in place and I can't turn them to take them apart. So I've been heating them up and then using this clamp to hold the brass insert. And then I can break the fiber disc loose with pliers. There. Now I know a lot of you are curious how I overhauled the valves and pouches here, 
but unfortunately I wasn't able to film a lot of that process, so we'll have to save it for a future episode. I actually ended up getting waylaid by a manufacturer's defect that is certainly no longer under warranty. So when I tore this apart, each valve well had three of these gaskets stacked up. They must have drilled these holes too deep, and having all that squishy paper stacked up over 100 years allowed these to warp. So I made these new spacers, which I'll glue in to allow for the proper valve travel. And since these top seats were all warped, I had to duplicate those as well. Now for our new parts, I'll be using these fiber discs, which are actually made for pipe organs. But for our player piano project, they're just not quite holy enough. All right, now that this thing is back together with fresh valves and pouches, let's take another look at it. So when one of these pallet valves opens, atmosphere rushes underneath that pouch and inflates it, and that pouch lifts up the valve. And that valve moves up and allows air to flow to the pneumatic. Recently someone asked me about how much money I've been making from YouTube and these videos. And the exact answer is zero dollars and zero cents. I have not monetized these videos. Any ads you're seeing are because of copyrighted player piano music I've been using in the backgrounds. For every minute of video, it takes me about an hour to produce it. If you'd like to further support my work, you can do so over on Patreon. Link is in the description. If you want, no pressure. Next, we'll look at the pneumatics that actually play the xylophone. And the bass consists of a bellows, a return spring that opens it up, and this valve here that as the pneumatic closes actually opens up. And while there's a constant supply of suction here that wants to keep this pneumatic closed, it can't stay closed because as it closes it's opening that valve, and that valve creates a loss of suction in the pneumatic. The spring opens it back up, and as it closes it pulls this valve back closed, and that vicious cycle just keeps on repeating itself. And just like everything else in this panel, these are going to need a complete overhaul. The fabric is dried out, so is this leather. That's dry rotten. So we'll tear them down and start over. Here's one stripped down, we can get a better look of what's going on. There's a return spring that holds the pneumatic open. There's this metal finger, which engages with this outside pallet valve. And there's also an inside pallet valve that the movable leaf closes. As the pneumatic is sucked closed, that outside pallet valve opens. But then it closes the inside pallet valve, which cuts off suction. The pneumatic springs back open. 
and the cycle viciously and violently repeats itself. There's two holes here. This bottom one connects to the supply and this one vents to atmosphere. This valve can shut off the supply and this outside valve can vent it. So with this outside valve closed, the inside valve has to open. The pneumatic will begin to collapse and as it does that, it opens that outside valve and closes the inside. Now originally these pneumatics were covered in a rubberized cloth, but after nearly 100 years, the rubber has failed, dried out, and now the cloth is leakier than a bedsheet. Now unfortunately, as far as I know, we can't get any good quality traditional rubberized cloth like they used back then. So I'll be using a synthetic cloth, which is extremely airtight. Now the thing about using synthetic cloth like this is that you can only use synthetic glue to stick it down, not sponsored. Now, of course, this is a very controversial topic in the restoration community, and for me, that's part of the appeal. Here's a pneumatic that's got some synthetic cloth on it, and therefore the synthetic glue. It's had about 10 years to dry, so I just want to show you that you can peel the old cloth off and actually remove the synthetic glue. I found you can use hydrogen peroxide, not sponsored, and actually soak that glue. And once it starts to turn white and gel up like this, you can actually scrape it off. Now, no, this glue is not at all traditional, but I have a lot of faith in how airtight this cloth is. And ultimately, I want to hear this piano playing again, and we got to move forward. Now, for anyone out there wondering about the difference between a glockenspiel and a xylophone, well, I'd tell you, but I can't marimba.
it is a huge relief to have this thing all back together and working. This is another project that I thought, oh, it'll take a week. It ended up taking a month. Yes, we'll post a video of it playing, but that'll have to wait until it's back in the piano. Thanks for watching.